So, first of all, this tea is um, 100% organic. It just happens to be organic. I'm not devoted to organic products or anything, but um, this one I bought because I really enjoy peppermint tea. Um, it's caffeine-free, but I drink it either in the morning or at night. It's good for both. Um, it says on here on the box, A cupful is the perfect morning jump start or a mid-afternoon refreshment. The first time I ever had hot peppermint tea was actually in Morocco. And um, it was on a trip to Morocco. I was on a Mediterranean cruise. And um, it was very hot where we were, and the peppermint tea really refreshed me, and I find, especially in the summer months, that peppermint tea is very refreshing, so, um, I enjoy it, so let's go ahead and open the box, this brand is Garden of the Andes, and as I said, these are actually bags of tea. It's not loose leaf tea. But um, we're going to break open the bags just to kind of add a step here. They smell absolutely wonderful. You can smell both the aroma of the tea and also the peppermint aroma. You can see the mint leaf right here on the package. And then um, if you can imagine the smell of tea mixed with the smell of mint. It really is wonderful. Gently tear it open and pour the tea into the bottom of the French press. Now, normally French presses are used for coffee, but today we're using it for tea. You can use it for either one, coffee or tea. I'm not a coffee drinker. I prefer to use it for tea. And I'm going to open a second bag because since this is just an herbal tea, you really need two bags even just for single serving. I love the sound of this bag.
was boiling not too long ago, so. And you definitely want to put the, um, the part with the drain in front of the spout because that's where you're going to pour. And I'm going to let that steep for just a moment. Let the tea leaves kind of float in the water. I don't know if you can see them floating. Maybe grazily on that side. They're just sort of Hanging out in there, floating around, letting their minty essence absorb into the water. And that water is very hot. And then I'm going to push the press down. I'm going to do this a few times, try and get the water on top clear of leaves. I'm going to allow this to steep for just a moment while I show you my cup. This cup was a gift from my mother-in-law. If you know the store Tivana, it came from there. I actually have a matching teapot. It's cast iron. I have these little leaves that are like little saucer plates that go with it. I have two cups like this. And I have a matching teapot. It's really heavy. You can feel the weight of it in your hands. So I'm going to run this French press one more time. And then I'm going to pour myself a nice cup of tea. Okay. Now, just to sweeten it a tiny bit, I'm going to use this agave nectar instead of sugar. I prefer agave nectar. It's um, sort of a syrup. This is the light version. I like that cap. I'll show you that cap. And, um, and now I have my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. That is very refreshing. Sorry to slurp that a little loudly. Anyway, it's very minty and just a little sweet. So there we have our cup of tea from our French press. Absolutely lovely. I love using my French press for tea. Even when I don't really have um, loose leaf tea available, I prefer using loose leaf tea that is supposed to be loose leaf. But if I don't have loose leaf tea on me, I just start breaking apart bags. That's okay. So the second thing I wanted to do today is use my olive wood 
mortar and pestle. Now, um, olive wood has a lovely green. As you can see, this wood is absolutely gorgeous. It has a lot of variation in it. It's very smooth when you feel it. And um, this is just a small mortar and pestle. I actually have a, a lava rock mortar and pestle called a molcajete that I use for making guacamole. And uh, I'm going to make another video just with that one because it has such cool texture. But um, I wanted to show you guys this one too. Makes cool little tapping sounds too. grind up a couple of things really coarsely. We bought this uh, pepper grinder in Croatia because my mother-in-law, who is 100% Slovenian, has a lot of pieces that are carved in a very similar style. So this is the part where the pepper corns go in kind of stiff to open because this was handmade using the antique parts. And then you adjust the coarseness down here. And then grind it at the top this part. I'll show you the other back so you can see. This just came out of my spice jar. It's dried. I prefer to use fresh basil, but I'm allowed. And the last bit is, this is, I only have a tiny bit left, but this is rosemary. I'm going to add almost all of it because it's pork that I'm making for him. And he really likes rosemary on his pork. I'll probably just put the spice mixture that I make back into, um, into uh, this little glass jar, which I got at Ikea, by the way. Great little deal on these at Ikea. This little spice jar. So I have um, this lovely little spice mixture, like pork rub that I'm making here. Salt, pepper, basil, and rosemary. for Paris on um, Friday, and so I'm trying to use up all of my fresh meat that I have here for him, so he's going to, we might get two pork chops tonight. Nice and ground up. 